Hello, Year 11s. This is a presentation about your subject choices for next year uh, as you move towards IB, and also um, a little bit of a, a general introduction to the IB diploma um, and what you will beginning, be beginning fairly shortly. Okay, so to start with, um, you're listening to uh, Mr. Beals, from Head of Senior School and the IB Diploma Coordinator. Um, so you'll be seeing a little more of me in person fairly soon. Uh, this is a couple of pictures of my family, so you know uh, what I look like if you see me around school. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking today about the, the choices that you have in Year 12 and Year 13. Um, initially, we're looking at uh, the IB in general. What is the benefits of doing? What are the benefits of doing IB? In, in general terms, it offers a very broad and rigorous area of study. You focus on several uh, subject areas, not just one or two. Uh, these are academically challenging. Uh, they're also very highly um, regarded by universities around the world. IB is the most respected course that you can really do at your age uh, as a pre-university course. So let's have a look at exactly what you study for IB. Uh, it's broken down into six groups. Each of the groups is a different area of study. Uh, we'll go through those in a bit more detail in a moment. You have to choose one from each group, and of those six choices, three of them must be at higher level, slightly more difficult, and three of them must be at standard level for the full diploma. On top of that, down here at the bottom, you can see we have the core in IB. The core is made up of an extended essay, theory of knowledge, and CAS, or Creativity Activity Service. And I'll talk about those a little bit in a moment. The other option we have is IB Courses. IB Courses looks very similar. As you can see, the only difference is you don't take the extended essay and you don't take theory of knowledge. So you can save yourself um, quite a significant amount of time by doing that. Um, the downside to that, or the, uh, the thing to think about, is that it does restrict your uh, university choices. Uh, it's still a pre-university course, as it says here, um, but it may limit your choices depending on where in the world you'd like to go. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the, the core. Uh, the core, as you can see in the, in the center here, made up of theory of knowledge, extended essay, and CAS, Creativity Act, Activity Service. The extended essay is a research paper. You choose one of the subjects you're studying for IB, and you go away and do some independent research about a question that's of interest to you. It's very open, very flexible, um, and also gives you a lot of really useful research skills you can take directly to university. The essay is 4,000 words long. Um, you get a supervisor to help you, uh, who's from the subjects that you've chosen for your EE. So you do get a lot of support along the way. Um, one of the best things in terms of preparation for university is the essay. Theory of knowledge is a, a subject that really covers all of your other subjects. Uh, it looks at critical thinking skills, again, something universities really like. And it generally, essentially asks, how do you know what you think you know? Um, so you see some questions here to have a look at um, different ways of knowing um, that we go through. Uh, we'll go through the TOK in a lot more detail uh, a little bit nearer the time. In terms of assessment for the TOK, some new assessments coming in for your year group. Uh, it will be made of two parts, an exhibition that you do in year 12 and an essay that you write in year 13. Along with the extended essay, uh, there are three bonus points available here. Uh, very briefly, in terms of marking, um, there are six subjects. Each of them are worth up to seven points, gives you 42 points. And then three bonus points gives you a maximum of 45. Generally speaking, you need 24 points to get the full diploma. Uh, creativity Activity Service is the third strand of the core. Uh, this is non-academic. Um, it's not assessed, you don't have exams in this. Um, it should be an enjoyable, challenging way to get you to do new things. It could be fundraising, leadership, trying something you haven't done before. Uh, very, very flexible, lots of exciting, interesting things to do for CAS. These are the basic rules for CAS. Runs over 18 months. You need a balance of three different areas, creativity, activity and service. And a lot of it can be done outside of school. Okay, let's talk about the actual subject choices. You need to choose three at higher level and three at standard level. Um, of those, uh, some subjects are only offered at standard level. So uh, if you do language A self-study, that's with an online tutor, 
that has to be standard level. Um, any of the group two ab initio or beginner language subjects and environmental systems and societies, these are only offered at standard level. Higher level in general is around about a 240 teaching hours. We offer slightly more at AIS. Um, it's a more difficult intensive area of study. The assessments are different from standard level. Broadly speaking, a higher level subject is very similar to a British A level. Standard level, fewer hours, about 150 hours. Uh, the assessments are slightly different. Um, you don't need as much of a specialization um, to do standard level. Generally speaking, if you link it to your IGCSEs, you would be looking at anything a B or higher. You should aim for, that could be, that could be a higher level subject. And anything above a C could be a standard level subject. All right, so let's move on to how to choose your subjects for IB. Um, with language A, group one is the language A subjects. These are your first language, or well, they should be really your first language, or a language you are fluent in. So if you are in one of the top sets for English, you could certainly do English A. Um, this is what it's aimed at here, higher level. Language A standard level, if you're a fluent in that language speaker in that particular language, um, you would have experience of using that language in an academic context and also will have studied literature at this level. Apologies for all these pop-ups that are getting in the way here. Okay, language B, is a, a second language, um, higher level would again be with somebody, somebody who's had several years experience in that language could hold a, a detailed conversation of a, a pre-intermediate or intermediate level. Standard level language B, again you'd have several years experience and be able to hold a uh, a regular conversation about familiar subjects. Ab initio in group two is for initial, it really initio means initial. Um, this will be somebody who's not studied that language before um, or has very little experience in that particular language. Okay, so um, at AIS you have to choose either English A or English B in your subject choices. Um, if you choose English B, uh, you may need to also do an IELTS or a TOEFL type test for university entry. Uh, English A, you may, you may not possibly. Right, so these, these are the groups we have. These are the subjects within each group. Um, group one is language and literature for native speakers or near native speakers. We offer a lot at AIS. English, Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese or Chinese A, if, that's your, if those are your first languages. Um, if they're not, you could also do self-taught with an online tutor in these subjects. Group two, uh, language B, we have English and Mandarin as language B subjects, and initial or beginner subjects, you could do French, Spanish, or Mandarin. Group three is individuals and society, humanities, um, standard subjects here. ITGS is similar to ICT, uh, without the need to know coding and that, that kind of thing. And you see ESS appears here. It also appears in group four, so you can make it, you can choose. Uh, these are the science groups in group four. Group 5, Mathematics, your math teachers will tell you a little bit more about the differences between these two. And Group 6, we have Music and Visual Arts, or you can go back and choose any of the Group 3 or 4 subjects that you haven't already chosen can appear in Group 6. Okay. Alright, what do you need to start actually doing IB next year? Uh, we have some new entry requirements uh, for you. So if you get five IGCSE passes, hit the C grade or higher as a pass, um, plus, your, plus passes at your first language course, then you automatically enter the IB diploma. Um, if you're a year 11 EAL student, you'll also need to have met the EAL exit benchmarks. If you don't get five IGCSEs, that's still, that's still possibly okay. Um, we will look at your results in August, and then we will decide what's the best place for you, um, equally if you're EAL uh, scores uh, maybe not quite what we need, we'll have a look at those. Uh, choices will be uh, provisional entry to the IB diploma or IB courses. A couple of things with mathematics, uh, if you're looking at doing higher level maths, you need a grade B or higher for IG extended or additional. Anything lower, you should be looking at one of the standard level maths. Uh, for English A and B, if you're looking at English A higher level, you should have at least a B for first language or literature for IGCSEs. If you've only studied IGCSE ESL, 
you should choose English B. Ab initio, if you have passed IGCSE French, Spanish or Chinese, you cannot do ab initio, you would have to choose language B. For these subjects, Art, DT and ITGS, if you want to study these, you should have studied them at IGCSE. If you haven't, it may still be possible, but you'll need to contact your head of department or the head of department to discuss the options. Once you start Year 12, um, we ask you and your parents to sign a perform performance and behaviour contract um, that shows you maintain certain levels and certain performances to remain on the full IB diploma. In, in terms of selecting subjects, you want to think about these questions. Uh, what have you enjoyed in the past? What have you done well at? And also looking forward, what may you study at university? Um, will, that, will that affect your subject choices? I'm going to flick through these quickly. You can pause if you need to. These are a rough idea of the type of subject choices you, have, you may choose depending on the type of um, degree you'd like to study at university. Just pause here if you want more details. Okay. In general terms, the advantages of doing IB um, are, are many and varied. Um, IB Diploma Programme is the most respected course for 16 to 18 years olds in the world. It is also the biggest in the world. Um, it's generally recognised by more universities and respected by more because of the range of skills and the academic level that is required. Um, in general terms, international students are a separate pool and so it's easier for you to stand out. There's also the options for scholarships in many places if you score particularly well. Other advantages, we have a big range of options, um, subject options at IAS, a lot of support, um, I'll, I'll be there to help you. We have university counsellors, regular counsellors, um, all of which means there's a lot of support and in general terms um, it, IB tends to mature students quite quickly and therefore sets them up for the challenges of living overseas and university life later on. Um, as I said, highly respected by universities, gives you a very broad area of a broad um, diploma across um, a range of subjects. So in terms of what happens next, um, we're going to send you an electronic IB passport. Um, in this, you can make notes about the various subjects and this will help you think about what is your best choice or choices for subjects. Um, your teachers will uh, probably make some short videos or contact you in some way to talk about uh, their particular subjects, you can use that information to fill in your passport and also if you have any questions please contact them or myself um, to ask about what to do. Um, early in March you'll get a subject selection form and also the new IB handbook. The handbook is very detailed, gives you a lot of information about every subject and exactly what you need to do to do well in IB. By mid-March um, you should have, support, so, so should have, um, so, uh, should have completed, sorry, the subject selection form, um, your parents sign it and you then hand that in. Um, if you change your mind, um, we have a very small window early on in the year when you can change subjects, um, but try and choose the subjects um, carefully and then you won't need to change. There's a link here for any more details if you need them um, or you can pop in on School Reopens or you can contact me via email or Teams uh, anytime and I will try and help. Okay, I hope that's been useful. I look forward to meeting you in person.